I want to thank all of those that subscribe to my mindfulness blog on sheriehanson.com, the 59,500 people who have chosen to subscribe as I work my way through issues and share them with you. I would also like to invite you humbly to like my YouTube channel where I am putting recordings of my blog and my poetry. This one is called Everything Does Not Exist and it is delivered in the method of Edwards' Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Everything does not exist. I have been surrounded by some people recently who are ill. He or she has had a relationship fracture, a dear life partner has been caught by a disease, or the turning upon the body of itself. Meanwhile, the social media feed has become a sewer pipe of toxic waste. The environment is under attack. Political systems are like some dissatisfied person sitting on a bar stool. Random flirtations with something new, looking for answers in all the wrong places. Children of only the select few are protected. Women's rights are being eroded so much it is like watching a glacier recede. The society is time traveling to the 1950s. Naomi Wolf, in her book, Vagina, analyzes the fear-based resistance when women are gathering power. It accounts for much of the clawback of equality that is happening currently. An issue that has people in a state of dis disbelief is the strategy of passive genocide. From the earliest day in American history, the settlers embraced the concept of outward signs of inner grace. And in today's political climate of the billionaire Congress, there is a reversion to the old philosophy, which has always run underground. If a person is selected by God, that person will be male. That person will be white. That person will be physically attractive. That person will be healthy. And lastly, the badge of God's love comes with the presence of wealth. The removal of protection for the weak, the ill, the deformed, the outcasts, those who are not a mirror image of the white male billionaire model is the logical result of the philosophy of grace and damnation. Passive genocide works. Street people die in the cold, drug addicts overdose in a system of selectivity, and the lower class have a higher infant mortality rate. While the uber rich are having new hearts popped in like a new battery. Knees, hips, shoulders, kidneys, facelifts, breasts renewed. Options float around this select group. At the same time, so many are in free fall out of the middle class because of the lightning strike of a single illness. A factory closes, a job ends, and with it the entire structure of a life crashes to earth. Never before have men in their 50s committed suicide so frequently. The greatest darkness that a social system can carry is the blindness to the understanding that no single person or family or class must earn the right to be included. Care and protection is a birthright. And it is in these countries that have the vision of equality that economic su success is the most vibrant. The soul of a nation can be blighted. Slavery, native genocide, racial hatred is a deep sickness that will be carried within the history of a country. The first step in creating a world that is calm, a world that is safe, is to address the soul sickness that is held within a nation's story. Compassion, inclusiveness, equality, 
commitment to humanity are the real outward signs of inner grace. Inevitably, each person and each nation selects a philosophy, a cosmology to reside within. It is a time when each of us must select a way of moving in the world if there is to be a world that survives. We all count. We all count. Thank you.